I'm glad I'm saved, I'm glad I'm free. church away and then when gravity turns loose to this old body
the Savior, there was no doubt about it. Satan cursed his body from his feet to his head. Then he told all his children that his cattle were dead. Then Job's wife said, why don't you just curse your God and die? But Job said, oh woman, you speak like a foolish child. Oh, he ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good. I gave my heart to Jesus and I took him as my savior. I cast my loss for the chosen ones and I started out for heaven. But soon I was forsaken, my friends left one by one. But the good Lord walked beside me and he never left me alone. He fed me when I was hungry, he cheered me when I was sad, and he has been the dearest friend this child has ever had. Oh, he ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good. Now history tells of a polycarp who martyred for the gospel's sake. They built a fire around his feet, then they tied him to a stake. But the fire would not consume him, so they pierced him with the sword. Then the blood ran down, put out the fire, but still he praised the Lord. Now all these years I served him, he's done me nothing but good. Well, I won't repent and I won't recant, just tell me why I should. Oh, he ain't ever done me nothing, done me nothing but good. Are you glad you're saved this morning? Yeah. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved, saved, covered by the blood of Calvary. Amen. What I want to ask y'all to do is not to throw you off or anything, but I want y'all to do that chorus right there, just a cappella. I want y'all to sing that. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Now listen to the words of this song. And if you're glad you're saved, worship. Amen. As they sing it. Amen. You can hit you a note just as a cappella. I'm glad I'm saved, I'm glad I'm free, I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary, I'm glad he brought me from the miry clay, I'm glad he washed my sins away, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen, amen. If we're glad this morning, we ought to be worshiping, amen. Thank God that he saved us, washed us. Thank y'all so much. Amen. That's just what we wanted. Amen. That was exactly what we wanted. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That we saved this morning. I, I got him to do that for a reason. A amen. And, and I want to stand up and just brag on my Lord this morning as well. Amen. Uh, watching TV last night and the girl that sings, uh, Let Me Tell You About My Jesus, I was watching some interview with her. And she said she looked back on her diary how she wrote that song. And she said everywhere that after she got saved, she had, when she was going through something hard, she put my Jesus. And that's where that song come from, amen. And I want to tell you something. We got to have our own Jesus, amen. I'm not talking about some Jesus we make up in our minds and all. I'm talking about you got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It can't be just Jesus. It's got to be your Jesus, amen. Uh, that's the Bible, by the way. Amen, that's Bible, and we ought to have a personal uh, relationship with him. I, I would like to say before we get into our scripture this morning, uh, uh, maybe set some things straight this morning, amen. Uh, uh, make sure that everybody believes uh, right. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things wrong with the world today is people just are not believing right. Uh, I didn't say you had to believe like me, Brother Darrell. I said we ought to believe right. And, uh, and we're talking with some this week, and uh, uh, after Tuesday night being in that meeting, I, I just couldn't believe some of the things that I would hear. And, and all and over and over again, it was always judgment, it's judgment, it's judgment. Sister Pam, everybody thinks if you stand for something right, it's a ju you're, mate, you're, you're being judgmental. And, and, and my thought is, and the truth is on being judgmental is this. Now listen, church, now we got to make sure we know this thing right. Amen. It, it, it is, is abusing a little child wrong? Yeah. 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 Is, is, is abusing your wife wrong? Yeah. 
Uh, is robbing a bank wrong? Yeah. Uh, is killing someone for personal reasons wrong? Yeah. Now I just ask four questions. Everybody in here judged. You were judgmental when you said those words. But I've got good news. You judged rightly. You judged rightly. And the thing is that judgment must be made. And we must make it correctly. And we must make sure that we get our judgment from the correct place. Because, see, I don't have a right to say what's right and wrong. And neither do you. So we got to go back to the place that tells us what's right and what's wrong. And then it's thus saith the word of God is where we're all going to have to end up at. Amen. And that is truth. Then you better make judgment. I don't mean be self-righteous and, and super holy. And I don't never mean be mean to nobody. But you better make a judgment, and it better be a righteous judgment. Or, hey, look, or you'll fall and be in anything if you ain't careful. Amen? And I just want to thank uh, 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 what happened this week. I tell you what, it just makes my steps a little lighter. Amen? Makes me want to walk a little. Hey, look, because God says he's the creator of life. Amen? And there ain't no way to break it down. There ain't no way in your mind when you try to break it down in your mind and make a wrong judgment. If you don't choose life, you choose a wrong judgment every time. Now, I know what some people think, and I've heard the argument over and over and over again, but I want to say something. You look at statistics on abortion, and hey, look, you look on statistics, and the truth is that less than 1% of the reason for abortions is because of rape or health reasons. Less than 1%. All the other reasons is because it's going to change my lifestyle. I can find, I, I'm not ready to have a baby right now. Uh, I, I don't have the finances to have a baby right now. My boyfriend said he would leave me if I have this baby. That's 99% of the reason. So our problem is not health. Or rape cases by a hey amen amen look you can look it up you got your phones you ought not be googling the church well you ought to go ahead and look it up preacher ain't wrong so amen what a what a green check we got this week amen from the Lord a amen amen look it up yourself hey look it up make sure our facts are right amen make sure our facts is right our children's church can be dismissed amen let our children go to our children's church. Amen. And, and if you don't like it this morning, I, I, I don't hate no one, and I don't, I, I'm not arguing with anyone. I'm saying if you don't like it, look into the Word. Amen. Where do you go for your truth? Amen. We've got to go somewhere. Because, Brother Wayne, we all believe something, but we better make sure we believe the truth. And we rightly divide in the truth. Amen. Amen. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, and I want to begin reading in verse 60. I want to read something I believe will help us today. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. See, he bought me. He sought me and he bought me. Hey, he redeemed this old boy. Glad I'm saved this morning. John 6 and verse 60. Look at what the Bible would say starting uh, in verse 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard him say this, said, here we are. Now I know there's a lot of amens, but somebody this morning may, may say what I just said was hard. They were talking about what Jesus said. Who can hear it? Who can hear this? 61. Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Doest this offend you? It seems like today that there's no more conviction. There's just offensive. I'm offended. I'm not convicted. I'm offended with the truth. It's not my truth. Does this offend you? 62. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, 
The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. From the beginning, who, who, who they were that believed not. Oh, and he knew, and Jesus knew from the beginning, who that believed not. And who should betray him. Verse 65. And he said unto them, Therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. My, my, my title this morning and my question this morning, are you sure? Are you sure this morning? Are you sure what you believe? Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. God, we thank you for victories along the way, God. That, uh, Lord, we just can rejoice that you're still on your throne, God. And, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll help us uh, as, a, as a people, as a family, as a church, as a nation, as a world to turn back unto you, God. And I know that you'll hear us and you will heal us, God, for that's your promise. And we'll love you and we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God, I pray this morning, God, as everyone's uh, getting settled, God, I pray if there's one that's lost this morning, God, if there's one that's not sure what they believe, I pray this morning that you'll give them that surety they need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you sure? Hey, look, it, are you sure about your salvation? Are you sure that Jesus is the Christ? Are you sure this morning? Is that, is that something that in your life there's nothing ever going to change your mind? Are you sure? A amen. Hey, son, a lot of people believe now. Remember about believing in the Bible. Went over this many a times in the church. Amen. We've talked about it. Hey, the devils believe and tremble, but they're not saved. Amen. So are you sure today about Jesus Christ is what I'm asking. Amen. And if you're not sure, my question is to you is where are you going to go then? Where are you going to go then? If you're not sure about Jesus Christ, where are you going to go? Uh, to whom are you going to go to if you're not sure about Jesus Christ? Who are you going to go to? Amen. Are you going to go to the intelligent people of the world? Would you go to the intelligent people? Hey, can I remind us that all of our significant intelligent people in history believed that Jesus was the Son of God, the Christ, amen, that believed he walked this earth? You can go back and read on Socrates. He would, a hey, Galileo, amen, hey, Einstein, all of them, hey, believed believed that Jesus Christ walked this earth. Hey, you can go to philosophy. Is that what you can do? Let me tell you what philosophy is. Hey, it tells us things we already know with words we can't understand. That's philosophy. Huh. But if you go to our great philosophers, hey, you can go to one, H.G. Wells. Everybody's heard of H.G. Wells. And he says, and in no other words, he would say these words. He would say, unless there's a God, this thing called life, time, and space would be such a joke. I didn't say he was a Christian, but he said, if there's not a God, this thing that we're living right here would be such a joke. Would you go to materialism, Brother Wayne? Would you go to material? Hey, look, can I, can, I, can I remind us that nobody's getting out of here alive and we ain't taking nothing with us? Where would you go? Where would you go if not Jesus Christ? Are you sure? Amen. Are you sure? Because where would you go if you didn't go to Jesus? That's my question. I, I think about it sometimes. I know I've been saved a little while, but I think about where, where would you go? I, I remember being lost, but I, I just I had no direction. But if you're this morning, if you're not sure, where would you go? Where would you go? Let me tell you how. Can, can I tell us this morning why I know I'm sure? 
Uh, and I'm going to use scripture. I, I'll tell you why I know I'm sure. I'll do a little, I'll do, I'll do a few points and we'll go home. Amen. Hey, but I want to tell us why I know I'm sure. Look at verse, 40, uh, verse 38 uh, there in John chapter 6 now. Look at what it says. Red letters in our Bible. He says, uh, uh, for I came down. Amen. I came down from heaven, amen. Jesus Christ said, I came down. You know what, you know what I, you know how come I know and I'm sure that I'm saved? Hey, I want, I got it out of order what I, my, my, my points I wanted to, but I'm gonna do it because this was first in this chapter, amen. Hey, but the reason I know because I've done a background check, amen, on my Savior, amen. I've done a background check on him and guess what? He came down from heaven, amen. Hey, he came down from heaven. It's the truth. Hey, some people don't believe that, but it's still the truth, amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Hey, let's do a fact check. A fact check. Jesus Christ walked this earth. And he said he came down from heaven. Amen. I'm doing a background check on our Savior now. Hey, let us know that we can be sure if we do the background check. Hey, when you, when you hire employees, people with businesses, you want to do that background check to make sure they are who they say they are. Amen. Hey, and this background check on Jesus is just pure fact that he was on this earth. Every great historian says he was on this earth. Amen. Nobody debunks that about Jesus Christ. He was on this earth. Matter of fact, there was a survey done of great historians, uh, really knowledgeable men of history, and they said they done a thing called the Ten Greatest Men in History. And guess who was number one? Huh? Hey, I said they were historians, not believers, amen. And they said the number one greatest influence on this whole world was Jesus Christ, amen. That's how come I know I'm sure his background check, uh, checked out, amen. Hey, J.G. A, a Fraser would say these words. Any true historian would, look, would have to believe that Jesus Christ was real and was here. That's his words, amen. Hey, they would, anybody that was any kind of historian would have to believe that Jesus Christ was here. I mean, he split time right in half, church. Uh, you confirm that Jesus Christ was here every time you signed a date, amen. Hey, you, you, you confirm as Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about Muhammad, amen. Hey, you don't confirm him in any kind of way. Matter of fact, you could take him out of Islam and you could still have Islam. You could take Buddha as a Buddhism and you could still have Buddhism, amen. You could take Confucius out of Confuciusism and still have it. But you can't take Jesus out of Christianity, amen, uh, if you wouldn't have anything, amen. Hey, he still, he still, his background check checks out, amen. Hey, can I tell us that he was real. He was resurrected. He was resurrected, by, seen by many eyewitnesses, amen. You know what it takes to be prove something's right? Eyewitnesses. Hey, and not just Brother Wayne and Brother Tony and preacher seen him. No, 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 no. 500 at one time, amen. Hey, seen him. Hey, he, he was seen by him. He was resurrected. Somebody says, well, maybe he's seen a ghost. Maybe they seen a ghost. They eat with him. They said maybe they were hallucinating. You telling me men's going to die for hallucination? All our, our, all our early believers would die martyrs' deaths, most of them. Hey, most men ain't going to die for a lie. What I'm trying to say is his background check checked out. Amen. His background check. That's how I know I'm sure, church. Hey, hey not only was he real, not only was he resurrected and rose from the dead. Let, let me give us some, uh, let me give us some scripture on this now. Hey, Romans 1 and verse 4, look at what the Bible would say. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Amen. He was resurrected. Hey, look, Acts 1 and 3, look at what the Bible would say. To whom also he showed himself alive after, this, after his passion by many infallible right. truths. Infallible right. truths. Amen. Hey, his background check checks out. And you know what else I want to say? How I know I'm sure? Hey, how do you know you're sure? I'm sure by his background check I did. Amen. Hey, I know what happened to me, but I had to go back and do a background check. Hey, anybody ever got saved and said, hmm, let me, let me check this thing out. Amen. Hey, I, I know what happened to me was real, but I wanted to go check it out and see what the background was. Amen. You know what? I've done a background check, but I also have a book that's perfect. I said, I got a book that's perfect. This book is perfect. Infallible proofs, amen. 
hey, look, you know, I got a perfect book. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? Because this book was written over 1,500 years of time by over 40 authors, 66 books in it. Hey, they were wrote three different languages, and every bit of it is partially cohesive together. It's perfect. If you ever find a, uh, somewhere it contradicts itself, Sister Dream, it's in her mind, ain't it? Huh? It's in our mind. It's, our, it's in our inability to understand. It's because we might be ain't prayed about it. By the way, this book is spiritually discerned. Huh? I got the perfect book. I got a King James Bible. Now listen, a King James Bible is the number one selling book in the world. Huh? I know in the last just few 75 years, they've tried to change it. Now listen, they tried to change this book, and they tried to dumb it down. They tried to make it easy to understand. But can I tell us something, remind us something from the Word of God that you can never understand this Word. You'll never get this Word. It don't matter if you make it, Jack and Jill run up the hill unless the Holy Ghost tells you. When you try to change it to make it easier, you're taking the job of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Still the number one. And, and here's the survey. It's not my survey, but it said it's, it's the most accurate translation of any of them. They said most accurate. Can I say to them, it's 100% accurate. Huh? Someone said we don't use those words anymore. And I like that. Uh, what you going to do? You don't, don't change. Hey, this is a translation word for word from the original manuscripts. Let's keep it right there. Amen. Hey, you talk, you telling me that grandmama couldn't make it to heaven because she needed to take out this or that? It's a perfect book. You know what gets me the most? Is ain't nobody never tried to rewrite Shakespeare. Think, think, let, let, just think on it a minute now. It's a perfect book. It's a perfect book. That's how I know I'm sure. Huh? Hey, people that's tried to prove it wrong has led their, hey, led their self right on into the arms of Jesus trying to prove it wrong. Huh? Trying to say it's out of style. It's, uh, no, 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 we live in 2020. No, 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 no. That's why I stick with the King James because it, it's unchangeable. Amen? You can't change it. It's unchangeable. It'll go with the times. You know what you can do? You can read Habakkuk if you want to, and it sounds like a Fox News reporter talking on the television today. He says, therefore, the law is slight, and judgment doeth not go forth. Therefore, men are perverse. Judgment is slack, and judgment doeth not go forth. Therefore, the law is slack, and judgment doeth not go forth. And therefore, men, it's wicked and evil. Hey, we better judge, but we better judge by this word. Y'all know what we say when we say that, too. I don't like no judgmental people. You know what, you know, when we say that, but it's so misconstrued today, you can't make a judgment on anything. We ain't talking about Hardee's is better than McDonald's, by the way. We talking about things that will go into eternity. It's a perfect book, amen. I done a background check and I got a book that's perfect, amen. I got a book that's perfect. Hey, you know what? The, you know why it's perfect? Because listen, hey, prophecy's been fulfilled. God said he was going to do something, and he's done it. Amen? That's why we know it's perfect. Hey, the unity of the Bible. Hey, it, it all goes together perfectly. Hey, it, 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 the longevity of the Bible. That's how come we know it's perfect. It's still here. Amen? Hey, look, I ain't got rid of it yet. Let me tell you something. You can't get rid of them. You can actually just tear down all the uh, print and presses and do what? You could burn every Bible you've ever seen for the rest of your life, destroy it from the face of this earth if it was possible, and it's still a record written in heaven can't destroy it. Huh? It's the longevity of it. Hey, and the historical accuracy of the Bible. A amen. Hey, hey, and the power of the Bible. That's how come I know I got a book that's perfect. Amen. Hey, and it's centered around one person. Let's get back to him, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, it's, hey, it, it's centered around one person, Brother Doug, Jesus Christ, and it's accurate with history, and it's circled around one, Jesus Christ, and it is his story. Amen. Hey, it's accurate. It's a perfect book. Hey, 
You know what I thought about Jesus Christ when he came to writing this book? Hey, he was sinless. He never withdrew a statement. He never apologized for anything he ever said. He never asked for advice from anyone. He never tried to justify his own actions. He never asked forgiveness. What were some of Jesus' strong points? Nothing, none. He didn't have no strong points because he had no weak points. He was perfect. He's perfect. He was perfect. And the Bible is centered around him. Hey, that's how I know I'm sure. Somebody said he had a miracle birth. No, 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 no. He had a miracle birth. He had a miracle life. He had a miracle death. And he had a miracle resurrection. He's perfect. He's perfect. Huh? How do I know I'm sure? Because I've done a background check. And I got a book that's perfect. Number three in our text. Number 63. Look at verse 63. John 6 and 63. Everybody okay with this this morning? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I want to say something. Not only do I have done a background check in a book that's perfect, but I got a belief that had an effect. I'm talking about when I believe it changed my life forever. Nothing was the same. Nothing's never been the same. Not been perfect. I hate, I hate even saying that, but I've not been perfect. Huh? I, fell in, I was doing good till I woke up. But I'm telling you, it had an effect on me. Brother Darrell, and everything that I used to do, I didn't want to do no more. And the things I've never wanted to do, I will find myself doing it. Amen. Hey, and, and, and I started praying and I started reading that perfect book. I started attending a church. Amen. I started doing a background check on Jesus. It had an effect on my life. See, I once was lost is what you got to realize. But now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see it had an effect on me. My belief. Somebody might say this morning, well, I don't believe. I don't believe like that. No sermon you preach is going to make me believe. They may look at you, Hunter, and say, no song you sing is going to make me believe. And I just have to tell them, I agree. I know what the Bible says. Foolish just a preaching on me and say. But don't, don't you think that I'm so uh, naive that I think I can take that scripture and say that's why people get saved. Because God already said in this scripture, if the Father don't draw, which was the Holy Spirit, they ain't going to be saved. So I agree with you, friend. It ain't my sermon going to save you. It ain't the song that's going to save you. Oh, no, 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 no. If Brother Billy ever says somebody got saved because I was singing a song, wrong. Not that God don't use him. Whew. Not that they don't use preaching. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit's going to do the drawing, and it's the Holy Spirit's going to woo, the Bible says, and the, and the Holy Spirit's going to do the saving, amen, by believing on Jesus Christ. Hey, it ta- I believe you when you say you can't do it because I know I can't do it. Hey, you, 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 may, you may disagree with what I say, but when the Holy Spirit comes down into the church of the living God, hey, and people are standing up, and they're holding on to the back of the pew, and they're swaying, huh? I know right away it ain't nothing I said, amen, nothing I did, no song. No, no, no Sunday school, none of that was done. It's the Holy Spirit of God working on a heart. Amen. Hey, and that's what's going to get people saved. And as they say something, true belief will have an effect. It'll change your life. There ain't nothing you can do now, brother. They haven't tried. Go ahead. Run out there in the world, see what you got. You'll be lost as you could be looking for that same one. Jesus. Amen. Where else you going to go? Can I ask you this morning if you're lost, huh? If you know, maybe you're backslid on God, where are you going to go? Huh? Where are you going to go? There ain't nobody's got the words to eternal life but Jesus Christ. Where are we going to go? Are you sure this morning? Are you sure? I'm sure because I've done a background check. Because huh? I got a book that's perfect. Because I had a belief 
I, I believed and it had an effect. And let's finish the chapter. Look in your Bibles, John 6, verse 70. Jesus answered to them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil. And he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Are you sure this morning? Because if you're not, you can do a background check. Through a book that's perfect. You can believe and let it have an effect. Because it would be bad to be incorrect. It would be bad to be incorrect. Are you sure this morning? Are you sure? <clears throat> you can teach any way you want to teach on but he hung himself because he was wrong. He was incorrect. It's bad to be incorrect when it comes to eternal life. He's the only one with the words to eternal life. Jesus Christ. We all stand. Whoever wants to get it, y'all can get us a song. Y'all up close. Are you sure this morning? It would be bad to be incorrect. Don't, don't miss out. Don't miss out on the greatest decision you'll ever make this morning.